Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains in Missouri, USA. In today's video, we're going to take a look at a repair attempt on my Epson printer, scanner, copier, slash fax machine thingy. It stopped working suddenly after I was done printing with a scanner error, which was odd because I wasn't trying to scan. But in Epson's brilliance, they have the scanner reset each time when you're done printing. So because of a scanner error, I can't print. Great job, guys. So as I used to work on this type of equipment way back in the day, I thought, well, I can take it apart and figure out what's wrong. So this is my attempt at taking it apart to discover the problem. And I do eventually get it back to a working state, but it's not quite fixed. And if you happen to be an owner of one of these and you're having this error, you can skip to the end and you know just see what I did to make it usable again. Anyhow, let's jump right in. This is my Epson printer scanner slash espresso machine. Okay, it's not really an espresso machine, but you know, printer, scanner, copier, fax, yada yada. And in Epson's brilliance, they made the scanner try to reset after each time you print, and about 50% of the time it's coming up with this error, and then you can't print anymore because there's a scanner error. Wasn't that a great idea? Let's see if I can show you under the glass here how flippy floppy that belt looks. There's a lot of glare. So my suspicion is that this belt has come off somewhere or the tensioner over here is stuck. Oh, there's a better shot of the belt should not be so flippy floppy and loose like that so i think that is the problem so we'll set this over on the workbench and have a look at it i did do some searching online but i didn't find anything on youtube or anywhere about fixing this particular printer so i thought hmm, what the heck i'll do a short video and maybe i'll help somebody else so the first thing we need to do is figure out how to get this scanner unit apart and I think we're gonna have to take it off the base unit. In another lifetime I actually used to service printers and computers and photocopiers and everything so hopefully I can do this. So okay. So these hinges lift up so when you put a book in there it can rise up and this screw in the middle looks like it's limiting the movement. Grab a screwy driver. It's got a little plastic bushing on it which is just begging to fall down in the hole there. Okay. Now. Okay. That is sliding up. Yeah, these feel like they're pulling out. This one feels like it's stuck in there, but it looks like it might unclip. Hopefully I'm not blocking the shot too much. No, I don't think that's gonna come out of there like that. Or like that. I think we'll start by taking out these two front screws and see where that gets us. I wound up buying this printer a couple of years ago because I had a bunch of stuff I had to print out and my old printer died. And this is what I could get locally on the spot that met all my requirements. And as luck would have it, I just happened to order some new ink for this. And it came in just as the printer broke down. Lucky me. There's some type of catch here and here. I have to pry this front cover out a bit. That's some progress. And just kind of lift up 
So we got that off there and that got us into absolutely nothing. Okay, so we'll just have to hold it. That's the problem when you're taking apart something for the first time. Is that you don't know the proper order to take things apart or what needs to be taken apart. And well, actually, why am I taking this? Why am I taking that apart? That's stupid. It would be easier if I could take this off to, I don't know what I was thinking. It's been one of those weeks and it's only Tuesday. Um, Okay, well, scratch everything I just did. That was completely unimportant. You guys are probably screaming at me. Saying, hey, Bert, what in the same heck are you doing? You're taking apart the wrong thing. Okay. Has some screws here and here and here. And there's a couple on the back that you can't really get to. Taking that prop rod loose. That still does not let us get. And here's the ribbon cable that goes up there. Oh my god, it looks like you've got to take off the sides in order to get to these two back screws. What a giant pain in the butt. What a stupid design. I remember back in the day, there was one photocopier brand that was really proud of themselves for how they designed the covers to be all interlocking, which just meant the poor service technician had to take, you know, three or four covers off instead of one just to get to anything. It was ridiculous. That's what you get when you have marketing running the show. Okay, you also have to take off this cover to get to those screws. Um, but it looks like now we can get the whole scanner unit off, which might be easier. And to take this cover off, there's some screws along the sides here and a couple on the front here. And then you hold your mouth just right and you can pop that off. Now, it 
looks like there's just three, four plugs here and this whole unit will come off. So thankfully this has a little pull tab on this connector right here. Okay. This one's a little more delicate. And I nearly, nearly goofed that up. Okay, this one's obvious the way it goes. This is the top. Uh, this is the top. And this is the top. Always mark your connectors. Even if you think you can only plug them in one way, mark them. That way you have no doubts. This side pops right off. Okay, you just gotta tilt it a little forward. Okay. Uh, I got parts flopping everywhere. And the printer does too. Okay. Now. interesting there's a little white piece of plastic but that doesn't look like it's from the printer okay now we can get to all of these screws and hopefully that'll take the document feeder off the top section a little encoder wheel there and a flippy floppy belt so I'm gonna set this down like this and this whole mess of wires is for the document feeder the ribbon cable was for the scanner itself Maybe we did all that for nothing. The only thing that I see that looks amiss here is how much slop there is right here. You can see that worm gear is actually moving side to side quite a bit. So I'll take that apart and see what it looks like. I put it back together. I didn't record that because it was just the opposite of taking it apart. I had one screw left over and it worried me. It was one of these black cover screws and they're all the same. And I finally located it right there. It's a little sneaky one. So luckily Epson used the same type of screws in the same locations and they were all the same length. So at least that part was fairly easy. All this interlocking cover work just to take it apart is rather silly though. Why I had it open, I took some soap and water and cleaned up the feed rollers, including this big one on the duplex unit. Now you don't want to, on this type of rubber, for these feed rollers, you do not want to use alcohol. You will dry it out and ruin it. Uh, just a mild soap, um, mild cleanser, wipe it down with a rag and it'll be just fine. And the camera butt and light keeps turning on and off. So I will put this the rest of the way back together and we'll see if it still works. 
it's about three weeks later and the printer is about 98% functional. It turns out that little plastic piece that fell out of the document feeder was something from inside of the document feeder and every once in a while it causes a problem. I really don't feel like tearing it all back apart again to get that document feeder off there and take it apart. So when it does pop up that scanner error, I learned I can open the document feeder and close it, turn the power of the printer off and back on, and then it's fine for another week or so. And that's good enough for right now. One of the really frustrating things when working on a piece of equipment like this is there's no real service information available. They give you an error code, but there's no reference to really say what causes that error code. So you're kind of on your own and you have to rely on past experience and a little bit of luck a lot of times. I'd like to take a moment to thank the folks who support the HateBert channel through Patreon and other means. I really appreciate it. If you'd like to find out about how to become a patron, just look for the link in the description down below. If you're a subscriber, thank you. I really appreciate it. It helps other folks find the channel and it's very encouraging to watch that subscriber count slowly go up. If you're not a subscriber, if you look down below, you'll see a rectangular subscribe button. Click on that dude and YouTube will subscribe you to the channel. Then you'll notice a bell-shaped icon. And if you click on that guy, YouTube will be nice enough to let you know just as soon as I post a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, bye.